Now let's discuss the development of pancreas. Again, the development of pancreas is a very, very important topic as far as UGI and PG is concerned. We all know that the gastrointestinal system is developed from the endoderm. So, in the beginning stages, the endoderm is forming a tube, a tube-like structure from which we have the derivatives of the gastrointestinal system developing. So, the endoderm, when it forms a tube, it forms three parts. It is the foregut, the second part you call it as midgut and the third part you call it as hindgut. So these are the three important regions from which the gastrointestinal system develops. Now let's see how the pancreas develops. So when we talk about pancreas, the development of pancreas is from two main buds. These are the two main buds. One you call it as the dorsal bud and the other one you call it as ventral bud. So we can see that this is the foregut part and this is the midgut part. And this region is actually forming a loop, a C-shaped loop. So we can take this as the anterior abdominal wall and this as the umbilicus. So this is the anterior and this is the posterior. So that is when we take a sagittal section through the body and when we look from the side. So when we take a sagittal section through the body and when we look from the side, this is the view. We have the anterior abdominal wall and this is the umbilicus and towards the umbilicus we have a loop formed by a part of foregut and a part of midgut. And we can see that there are two buds arising from the ventral aspect as well as from the dorsal aspect of the C-shaped loop. Actually this C-shaped loop is giving rise to duodenum in course of time. So duodenum is actually derived from foregut as well as Midgut. We can see that there is a contribution from the foregut as well as there is a contribution from the midgut in the formation of C-shaped loop. So the part which is closer to the anterior abdominal wall we can call this as ventral part and the part away from it or facing the posterior aspect we call it as dorsal part. And from this ventral as well as dorsal part we have two buds arising. And when we look at the ventral aspect, we can see that it is exactly at the junction of foregut and midgut, we have the development of ventral bud. And it is from this part, we have the development of primitive bile duct as well. So from the ventral aspect, at the junction of foregut and midgut, we have the development of primitive bile duct and the development of ventral pancreatic bud. And in the dorsal aspect, uh, a little bit cephalic to this bud, we have another bud developing that is called the dorsal pancreatic duct. So this is dorsal pancreatic bud. So this is the beginning stage. Now what happens? In course of time, this C-shaped loop will have one, uh, 90 degree rotation to the right. So when we see the C-shaped loop facing anteriorly, it just rotates 90 degree. So what will happen? The C-shaped, the anterior convexity will now be lying towards the right side. So this is the appearance. This one which was facing anteriorly is now lying on the right side. So that the C-shaped loop is having a 90 degree rotation. So along with this 90 degree rotation, now we can see that the dorsal bud which was on the posterior aspect is now lying on the left side. And the ventral bud which was on the anterior aspect is now lying on the right side. So the dorsal bud is now on the left side and the ventral bud is now on the right side. Talking about the ventral bud, in the initial period it is developing as a bilobed mass. So the entire process starts by fourth week of development and the ventral bud which is developing is uh, developing as a bilobed mass and later it gets fuse to form a single mass. Now the next aim is this ventral bud should go and merge with the dorsal bud so that the pancreatic tissue is completely formed. So what should happen? Now it has just covered a 90 degree rotation. In order for the ventral bud to come and join the dorsal bud, it should actually go towards the dorsal bud across the posterior aspect of the duodenum. So from this point it has to reach this point. So it is actually covering a 180 degree rotation. So in the initial period from the anterior aspect 
to the right it covered 90 degree rotation and from this right position the ventral bud is actually covering a 180 degree towards the dorsal bud along the posterior aspect of the duodenum. So 90 plus 180 degree is the rotation made by the ventral bud alone to reach the dorsal pancreatic bud. So altogether 270 degree is the degree of rotation covered by the ventral pancreatic bud in order to fuse with the dorsal pancreatic bud. And we can also see that the dorsal bud as it enlarges the major portion of the pancreas except the lower part of the head as well as the uncinate process is derived from the dorsal pancreatic bud. And this ventral bud is actually fusing with the dorsal pancreatic bud from the posterior inferior aspect. And the ventral pancreatic bud is actually forming the lower portion of the head as well as the uncinate process. So the major portion of the pancreas is developed from the dorsal pancreatic bud. Now let's see the duct formation. Each bud, the dorsal pancreatic bud will be having its own duct and the ventral pancreatic bud will be having its own duct. Now what happens is there is a communication made between the dorsal as well as the ventral pancreatic bud. This is called oblique communication between the dorsal and ventral pancreatic bud. And now let's see how the major and minor pancreatic ducts are formed. We know that the pancreas has got two ducts. One is duct of Virsung which is called the major pancreatic duct and the other one is called duct of Santorini which is the minor pancreatic duct. So let's see how the major pancreatic duct is formed. Major pancreatic duct is formed from three sources. First one, the distal portion of the dorsal pancreatic bud. The second portion is derived from the oblique communication between the dorsal and ventral ducts. And the third portion is from the remaining part or the proximal portion of the duct of the ventral pancreatic bud along with a small portion of the primitive bile duct and they will be opening at the major duodenal papillae. So major duodenal papillae is seen in the second part of duodenum when you open up the second part of duodenum exactly at the junction of foregut and midgut you can see a major duodenal papillae into which you have the opening of major pancreatic duct. So the major pancreatic duct is derived from three sources. First one, the distal portion of the duct of the dorsal pancreatic bud. Second is derived from the oblique communication between the ducts of dorsal and ventral pancreatic bud. And the third part is actually the proximal portion of the duct of the ventral pancreatic duct bud along with a small portion of the primitive bile duct and they open at the major duodenal papillae. There is a small portion that is a proximal portion of the duct of the dorsal pancreatic bud. This region is called this region is called minor pancreatic duct. This one is called the major pancreatic duct and this one is called minor pancreatic duct and this usually regresses or it may persist as a rudimentary duct and this will be opening at the minor duodenal papillae minor duodenal papillae so this is otherwise called accessory pancreatic duct since it is not seen always so major pancreatic duct is formed from three sources whereas the minor pancreatic duct or the accessory pancreatic duct is the proximal portion of the duct of the dorsal pancreatic bud and it opens at the minor duodenal papillae now these ducts will give many sprouts and form many ductules and asini. So we can see that if when the major duct is lying like this, this will give rise to many smaller ductules and you can see many asini. And in course of time, some of the asina cells from the walls will migrate and form a cluster of cells. That is the sum of the SNR cells from the SNI will leave the alveoli group and will form a smaller group, a cluster of cells. And they are actually what is known as islets of Langerhans. Islets of Langerhans. So islets of Langerhans is usually formed by third month of intrauterine period and it is actually the 
separated cells of the SNI which are clustered to form the small group known as islets of Langerhans. Now when we talk about the applied aspect of the development of the pancreas, the important one which we should mention is the annular pancreas. So what do you mean by annular pancreas? Annular, the word meaning is something which encircles. So we have already mentioned that the ventral pancreatic bud is actually derived as a bilobed mass which will later on fuse together to form a single mass. At times this bilobed mass will remain like this. This will remain separate and when it tries to reach the dorsal pancreatic bud, one bud will encircle through the anterior aspect and the other bud will encircle through the posterior aspect of the second part of duodenum. So ultimately what happens when these two buds encircle the duodenum that will result in duodenal obstruction because this part will be actually encircling the entire lumen of the duodenum. So that is the complication which we meet in the development of pancreas when the ventral bud remains as the bilobed mass and when it tries to fuse with the dorsal pancreatic bud one bud will go anterior to the duodenum and the other bud will go posterior to the duodenum. That is one of the complications expected in the development of pancreas and sometimes we may also expect accessory pancreatic tissue. So accessory pancreatic tissue can be seen in the walls of the duodenum instead of, a, instead of a getting aggregated with the major pancreatic tissue. So accessory pancreatic tissue will be seen in the walls of the duodenum. It may be also seen in the gallbladder and sometimes it will be incorporated in the Meckel's diverticulum. So these are the other sites where we have to look for the accessory pancreatic tissue. So accessory pancreatic tissue and annular pancreas, these are the two developmental anomalies, the most commonest developmental anomalies which we can expect in the development of pancreas. So just to conclude, we, we know that the pancreas develops from two buds, that is the dorsal pancreatic bud and the ventral pancreatic bud both undergoes rotation. Actually the dorsal pancreatic bud needs to undergo only 90 degree rotation to come to its adult position whereas the ventral pancreatic bud from the anterior position it needs to cover first 90 degree in order to come to the right side and the next 180 degree over the posterior aspect of duodenum to come to its original position. So it is actually covering 270 degree. So these are the two pancreatic buds and we know that the dorsal is actually giving rise to major portion of the pancreas except the lower portion of the head of pancreas and the unsinate process and the ventral pancreatic bud is giving rise to the lower part of the head as well as the unsinate process and the duct system, the duct of Wilson and duct of Santorini, these are the major and minor pancreatic ducts and the applied aspect, the annular pancreas and the accessory pancreatic tissue. Thank you.